Hey guys, it's Adam from Tested and I am in Wellington, New Zealand at the incredible Weta Workshop where we are about to see a pretty amazing thing. There's a film that's just been made called I Am Mother about a robot that raises a child and the robot is actually played by supervisor and actor performer here, Luke Hawker. Um, and it is a fully costumed person inside a robot suit. It's not a CG robot, it's not a puppeted robot, it's not animatronic, it is a person making and bringing this character to life and literally Luke both helped supervise the suit and wore it on set and we're gonna find out exactly what he went through to bring that character to life okay Luke before we get started in, in talking about all the things and there are many that are unique and special about this suit can you give me a synopsis of the film itself okay so uh, the film is about it's called I am mother so it's about a, a robot mother that raises um, basically starts a human race again after an extinction a human extinction event so she starts to grow a, a child and uh, out of embryo tanks and rears a, a, a young daughter and starts to repopulate the earth telling her that she can't go outside because you know everything has died out um, I'm sorry, just, literally, this is literally the first time I'm hearing that synopsis. I yes. saw the trailer, I saw the little clips of the film, but I had no idea that, that was the subject and that just gave me chills. That's really oh, awesome. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's a very, very amazing, amazing script and, and the film looks beautiful and with a central character that we hope is going to be quite iconic. But, That's the robot. Which is the robot and she's the mother character and yeah. there's mother and daughter and, you know, mother tells uh, daughter that she can't go outside and that everyone's dead, but then lo and behold, someone turns up at the door. So not everything is that as, as it seems. Um, but the thing about the story really is that there's this amazing, you know, awesome sci-fi, but there's heart in there and just questions of humanity and peril. It's, yeah, it's a really cool film. Okay, so there's an endless number of really unique a aspects to this, and I'm not even sure what order to cover them in. But the first and foremost is that you were the supervisor of the building of this suit and also the costumed performer in the movie in this suit. Yes. That doesn't yeah. happen all the time. No, that doesn't happen all the time. It, it, I will admit it was a, a very um, unique set of circumstances. And, and I was approached first as a project supervisor, because right. working at Weta for 18 years now. So done a whole bunch of builds and, and this one came and, and I was like, okay, this sounds really cool. Be very difficult to be the performer on set, being a performer, being the, you know, the lead character in this film. And you have experience as a performer and a stunt performer in a Yes, a costume I'm, performer, right? I'm an actor and a stuntman yeah. and um, I performed Krampus in the right. Krampus okay. Christmas Horror. So I have performance background. Um, but when I was approached about playing the role, I didn't want to, you know, sway them too much. But um, when the casting director started looking at the names that we were putting forward and we obviously wanted someone who was local in New Zealand, someone in Wellington. This is specifically because you've got to build the suit off of that person. Yes. And you need access almost constantly to them, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Whereas with other projects, we can have digital files. So mm -hmm. we can get a digital mannequin and we can build it off of that. With this one, knowing how small and how tight and how difficult the build was going to be, we wanted someone in Wellington um, so we could, or at least New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, um, yeah, so my name came up a couple of times and I finally said yes to the audition and got the role. Amazing. So. Now, yeah. Weta has built costumes like this before, full uh, performer covering costumes, but uh, this is a fairly low budget film. It does, they don't have, you only made one, you had one suit that you could make. Yeah, the, the, this is the entirety of everything that we made you see in front of us. And so it, it, it was, um, yeah, the, the one costume really came down to, the, to, to cost, but also, you know, um, really there's only one performer. So I'm the stuntman and the actor and the suit performer. <sighs> okay. So let's talk about some of the processes you used, because uh, I, I can, in looking into the interiors of these, I can see pretty much every process there has ever been. <laughs> I see some electronics, some fiberglass, some casting, some molding, some, is there 3D printing, I'm assuming? Uh, there's lots of 3D printing. All yeah, right. Yes, no, this, this is kind of, I, as I said, I've been with the, the workshop for 18 years. So I, I, we've been using a lot of different techniques and being the, the, the supervisor, I thought, well, I'm gonna have to pull all the cats out of the bag in yeah. order to meet the budget and meet the brief. Yeah. So yes, there, there is um, scented nylon. So we've got, you know, starting um, uh, right, right up at the, the top of the technology, we've got scented nylon. Mm -hmm. So these pieces here are scented nylon and, and they are modeled, 3D modeled, um, right, based right. off of the design, which the design is, is something that was, was, was quite, a, quite an ordeal. You know, Christian Pierce having to design a, a robot that's going to fit over a human yeah. was, was quite an, an... And not make it feel like it's a costumed performer. Yes, right. yes. And, and, and everyone, you know, you've got C-3PO, you've got Robocop, and those are the, currently, the, you know, the ones that are kind of at the bar. So we're, yeah. 
treading in, in waters that were a little yeah. uncomfortable because those are very iconic characters. Sure. Um, but once we've got that and we've got the performer, we started to, to 3D model and, and basically pinch everything in exactly where we needed to. Um, and the reason I mentioned that with the scented nylon is that this thickness, before we send it off to get, to get printed, mm -hmm. uh, is based off of the distance between the back of my heel and the front of my foot right. because that's how I dress it. So the, oh, right, of course you can't get your foot in. No, it's a problem I have with my Robocop costume. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. So, so those are the types of challenges that you have to think about when, when, when making these things. Yeah. Is, well, this bit can be scented nylon, but this bit here, it had to be fiberglass because we didn't know how the knee would work until right. trying it on and, and doing a fitting. Can I see that? Yes, yes. And I mean, these are all hard parts that have to work together, but you as a supervisor also have to think about the wear and tear that this is going to take over a 30 plus day shoot. Yes, yes, and doing stunts as well, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and in heels, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there, there's a lot of questions of what is the right product to use for, for look, but as you say, it's for longevity. Yeah. Um, and we also do a lot, did a lot of work, um, once we've got the design, we do what's called a black foam, which okay. is basically a, a sketch mock-up mm -hmm. in like a EVA foam kind of like, you know, cosplay slap together. Right. And once we have those pieces, we fit them around me, we then scan them, and then we can kind of look at the way they work. But it's always a rehearsal. Right. Once you get the piece out and you put it on, everything changes there. Well, and these are hard parts. As a, as a, as a cosplayer, I know that like even something as... Uh, like a stormtrooper suit can give you some serious pinches and bites and you're yes. going to have to deal with all of that in this, right? Yes, yes. And I think that's something that I think was good being the performer and the supervisor is that I could make decisions like, well, I just, I just guess I can't do this and I'm going right. to have to change the way I perform. Right. Such as with the arms, if we go over here and have a look, yeah. these arms aren't, there's no soft components in the shoulder area right. or in the elbow area or in the bicep area. So this here is an actual rotating. It's a bearing. It's oh my bearing. gosh. Yeah. And so those little bushes there uh -huh. do, do that. And then this is the bicep thing here. And then this elbow here. And, and the distance between the, this here and this here pivot literally is a millimeter. I spent a day grinding it away so that it wouldn't grind past my elbow. Right, right. And it, the pivot points like that. And, and, and this bicep ring, which I've got a, a mock-up of it here, this bicep ring was taken off of my bicep, considering exactly, exactly. Right, so right, I can right. put it on, and I can know that yes, and that it you're just doing. fits. So, you know, up till now, I'm asking questions based on the difficulties of being both a supervisor and performer. But I also imagine that when you take a costume performer and they're on set, and the, you know nothing ever goes as planned, so the director wants things that might not be possible. The performer, an average performer, might not know what's wrong with the suit that the director wants, but you have an insight that's totally unique on this. I mean, did that help you on set solve problems with the production? Y yeah, I think so. I think it, it gave me the ability to, um, it gave me two things. It gave me weight so that when I said that isn't possible, they knew it was 100% correct. Right. But then also I but could being say- being a film person, that would also be the very last thing you would say, right? The very last <laughs> thing I'd say. And in fact, Tim, who was the, the, the wedded guy who was looking after me on set, would, I would usually say something and say, I can do that, I can do that. And he was in my ear on a radio, he'd say, I don't know, man, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, there was a lot of uh, collaboration and, and problem solving, especially to do with the hands um, and, and just really getting through doors and, and sight Performance-wise with the hands, you mean? Yeah, the hands, I mean, hands are always cumbersome no matter what you do. And, and that was one of the main reasons I was a little bit trepidatious with me potentially playing the role was because of the size of my hands. Right, it seems right. like a silly thing to do because I'm not a massively large guy, I'm not a massively small guy, right. but I have worker hands. Mm -hmm. So I was concerned that I would then create a too big a too big a hand, but with titanium, these are titanium wow, printed they're, fingers. Are they, is this sintered titanium? Yes, sintered titanium. Wow, that is so beautiful. And, oh, they're not mechanic, well, they are mechanically connected. No, and those I little can, sliders a little bit? Yeah, they, they've got little sliders and little runners in there. And so basically what we had the ability to do is to test a whole bunch of print ones in ABS or filament. Yes. And then try them on me and, and, and figure it out. And the team all got together and stroked our brains and tried to figure out what we could do to, to, to make it work. That um, is really, really cool. I have never, I haven't seen this in a film prop yet. 
Yeah, it was a, it was a, a quite a large amount of the budget was for, <laughs> <laughs> for the whole soup. It was for the hands, but they the, they play so much. They in tell the film. a lot of the story. Yeah, and I think the hands are where the only thing that would be a soft element would right. be those hands. But yeah. I think we we've kind of you know nailed it. And with knowing how thin they had to be, like these are two millimeters thick. No other product we really could think would of would be as strong. Would, yeah. yeah, you build these and you know they're just there for the whole shoot. They're there for the whole shoot. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of the of the software version of the performance. That's your brain. Mm. You're you're encased in this. Yes. Where do you see out of? So um, uh, I thought initially we were, I wanted to have like direct direct vision is always best. Right. You know you want to have you know. So being, being able, able to, to see, see through yeah. a hole, a veil, a grate, a, a, something yeah. is mm-hmm. always better than anything inhibiting you. But looking at the design and looking at the way my head just fits in it. Um, we really had to have a, 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 some goggles or something in there. FPV and, goggles. FPV okay, goggles. With a and, camera. A, and And I, I'd done in other films where you know you have like a little iPhone and you have a camera and mm-hmm. that's kind of cool. But it's, I've done that before. It's not that yeah, bad. It's, it's not that workable. bad. Yeah. You learn to map a little, right? Yeah, you do. But with the script, like I'm getting needles and I'm pulling them out and then I'm grabbing people by the neck and I'm holding children. <laughs> um, You're holding babies. Live yeah. babies. I was kind of like <laughs> I might want a little el- more element. So in here, hidden behind this vac form piece right. uh, is a set of stereoscopic FPV goggles. Ah. So for drone racing. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so we've got okay sort of you know, lenses and, and okay sort of a, a vision in there. Uh, and that was how I, saw, how I saw the world. But it's still only about this much. And so I need people like Tim and, and Soilo, who are the wetter guys on set, to be my third eyes around like that. Yeah. Um, and they're, so they're in your ear the whole time, helping you understand, th- giving you better situational awareness. Yeah, and also letting me know things like I have no peripheral vision, um, but also I can't hear very well because there's fans going on in there. Right. Um, but I also need to hear the other actors because I'm delivering dialogue. I'm, I'm acting the whole time as well. So do you have a mic built into the suit? So you no, can, oh. I've got a little grate. There's, if you look up here, actually, you can see there's yeah, yeah. a little grate, uh-huh. and that's where my mouth is. So wow. this grate allows me to breathe, but also allows me to talk through. And um, you could get a sip of some water if you needed it. Water or a muesli bar because I, I had to quite, I lost a little bit of weight to make it as small as possible. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and uh, what happens if your nose itches? Uh, <laughs> you deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> the same way if you get sweat in your eye or, you know. Are you yeah. wearing a sweatband? In order no, to I'm in a skull, full skull cap. Right. Um, and there's also like, the, the, there's other times where there's like a laser that pops out and, and that was just fit. And when, when they crushed it in and they put those last bolts in, it was kind of like, okay, let's roll camera. Oh, man. Yeah, but I, again, being the project supervisor, I didn't want to let anyone down. Like, cause I'm the project supervisor, but really I'm the, the custodian for this character right. that Wit has created. And so I have that level of responsibility to, to do it. And it sounds like the best of all worlds, right? They, you, you understand what the suit can do, perhaps on a, no, not perhaps, definitely on a deeper level than any performer you'd hand this suit to. Yeah, yeah, I mean, whether that's a good or a bad thing, I think, yeah. it, I think in this stage with such a technical thing, I actually think it is a good thing. Um, um, when you're doing these, when you're doing takes, are you, are you trying to watch the takes as well to learn how to perform in the suit, to learn what you're doing and what it's gonna look like? It's a fine line between, I think, and I, I, I guess many suit performers might say the same thing. It's a fine line between being a performer and watching yourself. Yeah. And for something like this, it's very much, I, I describe it as ballet dancing in a bulldozer. Yeah. You, you're, you're pushing buttons and you're moving things like that that aren't necessarily correlating with your movements. So I wouldn't often watch it because how it feels on the inside doesn't look anything like No, it, it doesn't. That's why I was wondering about yeah. it. I've, I've, I have found that very thing in cosplaying that like you do something, you think you're doing big movements, you look in a mirror and you're just like, you're doing Goofy. nothing. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was curious about that process of translation. Yeah, and I think the best thing was Grant and I were really honest with each other and he would let me know, like he didn't want anything to look bad. So he would, I said to him, no egos, just right, tell right. me. If it doesn't sell, let's fix it. Okay, so as I've been talking, I put my hand on this, and I'm noticing that there's like, even though this looks like a, a, an aluminum battle frame, yeah. I'm noticing that it's only parts of it are aluminum. There's like multiple different materials going on. Yeah, yeah, with, with such a, like this, this suit has about 200 components, um, I think, plus in it. And so with that, there's many different things that we're having to use. So we've got scented nylon again, aluminum, cold cast resin. Uh, and so we had to kind of jigsaw it a bit, print some pieces, look at them and go, well, they don't actually work now, especially around a human form. Right. So there's a lot of trepidation and, and you know, fear because 
uh, of making sure that they all work together. And that just comes down to, the, to really the, the skills of the technicians. Because mm -hmm. you've got all these things here that look like aluminium, but they're not. Only, only one so of them they, is But they have to match. They have to They have to feel match. cohesive. And there's a bunch of lighting in the suit, too. Um, so the lighting element, I think, helps it to make it feel... And that, that was all designed as well. Right. Um, and helps to make it feel more alive. Uh, and also, this whole, this whole silicon panel here warms up oh. and becomes like a warming panel for babies. Wow. Um, so it, it's, yeah, it's a very interactive. And I think the lighting, especially in the, in, in the lighting of the, the set, uh, really sells it as a, as a really iconic character. There's like dust and sort of, you know, the, you can see this, this eye, this main eye lights up in it. Yeah, it's... it's I saw cool. in, the, in the clip the, the, the irising in, and it's funny because when we see a mechanical eye iris in, we all go right to Terminator yeah. in our heads, and yet this is a benevolent creature. Yes, <laughs> yes. So it, it has, I think the great thing about Mother is, is that it was on set. It was a dance between Tim and myself. Mm -hmm. I'm, he's operating the face, and right, I'm operating right, the right. body and delivering the dialogue. But the great thing about Mother is that she's loving and warm, and and you know. But then she turns, and you, those eyes start to. You see some other things going oh, on, and and it, it's really amazing. And I think there was a, a bit of a worry they had initially that whether this face would work. Yeah. But I, I think after watching it, you you realize that no, it, it's a it's a very interesting character. All told, when you had it all on, how much does the suit weigh? Uh, about 91 pounds. And I weigh about 140. So That's a lot of weight <laughs> sitting on you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a lot of um, massages and, uh, and hot showers and um, painkillers. <laughs> was, um, was, was there a... Um, like, there are, I'm sure you made a lot of physical compromises for this performance, but I'm wondering if there was a problem that you really wished you could have solved but never got over, some bite or pinch that you never uh, were able to fully uh, overcome. Well, there, there, there was a thing in the back of my knee that, that consistently got me, and I had this back, black bruise there for a couple of weeks, <laughs> which was pretty bad, but I think the worst one was the shoulders. Yeah. Like, this whole section here, it, it's like, I, I don't know, it's like maybe 50, 60 pounds. It just sits right here, yeah. and she's so still, and my neck has to be so strong that that bit just, oh, just after a while, just weighs down. Did you consider doing some more, like pulling into you, like a steady cam harness? It, it has. I mean, the, the issue is, is that the fiberglass of the shell is right. literally here, and I'm actually kind of not breathing and yeah. laugh. And and this came down to because of the 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 build being so so economical. Yeah. Um. Some of these are actually computer hard drives. Yeah, I noticed and that. We we were going to mold and cast them, but we kind of ran out of time. And because I was a supervisor, <laughs> oh, so add an extra pound. Who, who cares? cares? <laughs> Just chuck it in. I'll be fine. And then I get on set and going, what was I thinking? <laughs> Oh, oh, that's all right. All right, that's where my head goes. So, okay, so this is magnets holding mm. that together. It, it took about uh, like forty-five minutes. Yes, the first bill, the first time we dressed me, it took two hours, uh, and and it, it cut off the circulation to my um, to the point where I said, okay, get me out, get me out. I think there's you know going to be a problem here. Uh, but then we got it down to about forty-five minutes. Um, but there were uh, fifty bolts every day. To oh put my me gosh! In and out. So, so did you put the suit on in the morning? Well, you had to eat lunch. Yeah, so that was one we asked people what thing I would like to change. I think one of those would have been the amenities for uh, maybe go to the bathroom because um, <laughs> someone comes up and holds a bucket under you. Well, but yeah. They, they just don't do a spigot. <laughs> it's like a little fluid thing exactly. that fills up and then it's just like empty. Uh, no, that, that was the going number ones was okay. Yeah, I took yeah. one arm off and I could get out. Number twos is basically a, a full D rig. Uh, so I, my diets were consistent with maintaining a regular. Uh, don't put yeah. the suit on until after my coffee. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Got it. Definitely. Um, so I, I have actually encountered another uh, 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 full performer robot suit. Uh, I worked on Bicentennial Man. Oh, wow. The Robin Williams film. Yes, yes. Um, which was an amazing uh, a costume because it actually completely covered... There, there was no soft bit like in mm. C-3PO where they make some cheat. Every joint was hard. Wow. Every joint was a bearing. Every opening had the accordioning. Mm. Um, and uh, on my second or third day, I was in the bathroom and the, it came back to the model shop to find Robin in full robot costume staring at my toolboxes. He wanted to know whose toolboxes they were because his grandfather was an inventor and he, he dug my toolboxes and um, he asked me questions about my toolboxes while I manipulated his costume and was like, you can ask me about those. I'm going to be looking at your costume. <laughs> and the costume was done by Steve Johnson of XFX. 
uh, and it's all uh, back painted PETG vacuum form. Really? Yeah, it's a really, wow. it's a masterpiece of engineering. Wow. And you could tell, I mean, it gave, it, it, it gave me a lot of insight into what you guys had to do because, you know, these big bearings like this, the Kadon bearings, they're not cheap. No, uh, <laughs> no, no. And, and they're not cheap to, in, in price, but also in engineering. There's yeah. so much that's involved with engineering, such as just making sure they don't pinch you, which they did. I mean, I've got a scar from where I, you know, got pinched by it. Wow, but, wow. But I, I think, yeah, it's funny to, to, to hear that with Bicentenary Man, because I, I remember watching that film. And I, when this started on this project, we watched all these different ones. And I saw Bicentenary Man, and I assumed it was soft but no, knowing this. all hard every wow. last bit of that costume was hard wow well, yeah this is a, re a real masterpiece and actually so is this this is a beautiful costume i really i thank you so much for walking me through this oh you're welcome thanks I, for your interest. I can't wait to see this movie i'm yeah. like so moved by the concept oh awesome it's awesome all... um and uh you know i can chuck it on if you what wanted. really yeah okay that's going to take a while. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay, I'm going to go away and I'm okay. going to come back. Oh, that would be really cool. You're willing to wear it for us? Yeah, yeah, I'll do Fabulous. It. Luke, I'll see you in a little bit then. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh man! Hello, Tim. Hello. Nice to meet you. And I've you. been and hearing you. how you were critical support uh, in the construction and running of this on set. That is totally uncanny. Yep. Uh, wow. That's a cool thing. A pleasure. Nice to meet you, mother. <laughs> oh, it works almost like a smile. Yeah, it's sort of. A, I think we kind of see it as like her sensory. You know, when, when things are going on, they're all moving over the show, but when she does want to show a bit of emotion, we do give a bit of a smile up there. It's really uncanny. You, 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 you know, I know that there's a person in here, but the performance, I can see the performance things that Luke is doing. Um, but even more than that, the suit really doesn't feel like it's betraying that there's a person underneath all mm, this stuff. Mm. I think that was, that was probably the biggest break for, I think, for us. And it was sort of multiple things, you know, extending the neck, Mm -hmm. Having not so much symmetry all over the show, and then yeah, Luke's Luke's performance really just takes the cake. I think. I also I love this sort of clear plastic wrap around the midsection. It feels exactly right to the way an industrial human interacting robot might hide some of its uh, uh, more that dangerous shroud, bits. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, do you think that Luke is having a little PTSD from putting the suit back on for the first time in a long time? I think so. I think he's probably <laughs> twitching. There you go. See? Look at that. Yeah. I think he was probably expecting that after the break, maybe he wouldn't fit inside it. But uh, you still fit it, Luke. I, I love the iris, the irising eye and mm. how you've reclaimed it from the Terminator to something benevolent and awesome. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's fantastic. Did any, like... You lived and breathed with this suit for, for a month on set. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, is there stuff you'd still like to change, to modify, or are you completely done with it? Possibly, <laughs> maybe the fact that there's sort of 50 odd bolts uh, to bolt them in every morning, we could probably have, you know, slim that down a little bit. But, um, and toilet. Yeah, uh, yeah. Those types yeah, of yeah. things that, you know, I guess in the perfect world, you'd be able to just magically make that happen but yeah. of course you know being a human in there uh we had to, did have to de-dress them sometimes to go to the toilet that kind of thing yeah um but to be honest adam all in all the the suit was amazing on set we really ran into very few problems luke dealt with it extremely well made our life a lot easier um and 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 the crew really respected his uh space nice you know and made sure that when he was walking on everyone gave him that space gave him that respect I um, love the little touches like the battery monitor on mm. the side. Um, since there is a performer in here and this is a difficult and heavy suit, could we do a 360 for some close-ups and then we can get you out of it? I really appreciate you putting this suit on and letting us see your magnificent work in motion. You guys really... Uh, Whoa! That is... Yes, let's... Oh, oh thank you, Mother. <laughs> Look at this.